as I've stated numerous times in these videos and in other videos, the SAT problems that you'll see for math are not going to be, or they're going to look like in some ways the math problems you've seen in school, but in many ways they're going to be very different. And in one of those ways is for algebra and the kinds of equations that you might see or the kinds of things they'll ask you to do with equations. They may not be something that you're interested in, or sorry, or used to, or more insidiously, they might be something that looks similar to other things you've done in school but actually turn out to be different and fortunately for us simpler. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me give you some examples. Let's say the SAT said this. If a plus b equals 5, then what is 6a plus 6b? Now you might say to yourself, well listen, this looks like two equations with two unknowns. I've got to maybe stack these up and add them and subtract them, but how do I do that? I don't have this number. How am I supposed to figure, like, what am I supposed to do here? Am I supposed to find A and then B, and then once I found A and B, plug it into these guys? And, like, what, what am I supposed to do? The thing is, this is an example of it looks like something else, but it's actually different, and it's actually simpler once you figure out what they're trying to say. Let's take a look at six, A plus B for a second, and then 6A plus 6B. 6A plus 6B these two terms share a common factor, and that's 6. So let's remove that 6. What's left in here? Well, 6a plus b, right? Well, what are we told? We're told that a plus b equals 5. So we can replace this with 5. So this is just no different than 6 times 5, which is 30. And there we go. 6a plus 6b equals 30. Another way to see this is take this equation, multiply both sides by 6, and you'll get 6a plus 6b equals 30. Similarly, you could see something like this. Um, 8a plus 2b equals 20. What does 4a plus b equal? Well, you might think, oh, do I have to figure out a and then b and then solve? No, just say, okay, look at this guy. He's 8a plus 2b. Well, let's just divide this side by 2, divide this side by 2. That will leave us with, on the left side with 4a plus b equals on the right side 10. And there you go, 4a plus b equals 10. So when you see, now again, there are some circumstances where you may actually have to do the two equations, two unknowns, uh, simultaneous equations thing. And actually, there'll be a little video on that later. But a lot of times with certain SAT questions, you don't have to do that. You have to simply manipulate what you're, what something you're given in order to get the answer that you're actually looking for. Now, the second kind of equation you might see, or problem involving equations you might see, is solving for a variable in terms of, you'll see that phrase, another, or more than one, two variables. So what's an example of this? Problem might say this. Now, I won't say this directly. This won't be the problem, but it'll be um, part of a bigger word problem. And actually, in other videos, maybe not in the boot camp series, but certainly other math videos, I'm going to show you how these in terms of problems can be made easier by using your own numbers. But uh, we're not going to talk about that right now. I just want to give you an idea of what this means, what they're kind of looking for you to do. So let's say they tell us that if, let's say, 4x plus 2y equals z, what is x in terms of y and z? So what are they saying here? Well, what they're simply saying is they want you to rearrange this equation such that you get it ha some uh, in the form of x equals something. And that something will be what they say in terms of y and z. In other words, it will include y and z on this side in some manner. So all this is saying is let's just rearrange this equation so we get x equals something we're, we're pretty used to doing. Again, if they had asked for what is y in terms of x and z, you just solve for y. And you have on the right side, you would have some form of x and z. In this case, we want to get x. So Let's figure out what we got here. We have 4x plus 2y equals z. Well, let's subtract 2y from both sides. That's going to be z minus 2y. I want to get this x by itself, so I'm going to divide everything by 4. So we're going to get x equals z minus 2y over 4, which is also the same thing as z over 4 minus 1 over 2y. I just uh, split this 4 out and made it divide each one of these terms and left it like this. Either of these are they're equivalent, and they're uh, both right. So that's simply what they mean by solve in terms of x, or solve in terms of y and z in this case. Uh, and that's all you really need to do for those kinds of problems. Again, I'll show you in later videos how if you see this phrase in terms of something, there's an easier way to do it. It involves putting in your own numbers, uh, so you don't have to do this algebra, because sometimes it can get confusing.